Hello student friends. Good morning to you all. This is Mr. Rao. Mode of infection here in the case it is caused because of bites of infected female anopheles mosquitoes. Here the point that to be noted. Of course here I mentioned female anopheles mosquito it helps for transmission of this disease but not all the female anopheles mosquitoes. So if that mosquito is get infected with this uh, plasmodium parasite then the same mosquito if it bites a healthy person then the parasite is get transmitted it leads to the infection in a healthy person so that is actually the mode of transmission and next to this there the infective form it's a very important bit that you need to keep it in mind then what is the infective form of a parasite here you should know about the infective form what does that mean in the life cycle of any kind of parasite it goes through the different stages so the infective form is a stage at which the parasite it enters into the host body in its life cycle is known as its infective form so here the sporozoite is a stage of this malarial parasite here life cycle at which it enter into the human body so that is the reason why the sporozoid is considered as the infective form of this plasmodium this is a one important point important bit also so this is one and next one here the common symptoms of the disease i will explain all these things in detail but now i am briefing you in this regard the person who is suffering from the great from this fever experience the great chill with the shivering sensation and thereafter he will get a high fever also these two are the common symptoms of this disease and next to this when you see this life cycle of the parasite we will see more detailedly in this regard coming to this life cycle of the parasite it is here described here below once you see this the life cycle of the parasite it takes place in two different hosts so if a parasite completes its life cycle within the two host then such a kind of parasite is known as digenetic parasite and here the plasmodium is a digenetic parasite what does that mean and this parasite completes its life cycle in a two different here the hosts one of these two two hosts are present one of the two hosts it includes one is a man is an important thing and the second host of this parasite it includes mosquito the two the female anopheles mosquito these two are known as the here the host when there are two hosts are present as i said here they are known as digenetic parasites there are some of the parasites are there which are monogenetic also then what is it mean monogenetic since i said digenetic includes two hosts you can easily guess the monogenetic here it includes it completes its life cycle only in a single host but the malaria parasite is a digenetic one the two host here are one is the human being whereas another one is a mosquito now i will tell you two important here facts related to this when there are two hosts are present we have to give the names to the two host like one is a primary host whereas the second one is known as a secondary host here the point is in case of malarial fever always the female anopheles mosquito actually is the primary host this is primary host then the human beings in which here a part of its life cycle is get completed is considered as the secondary host here you may have a big doubt how do you decide one host is a primary host the another host as a secondary host here is an important point that to be noted human beings is considered as the secondary host the reason for that is the feeding stage of the parasite which is known as a trophozoite is present in the human red blood cells it is an important part the feeding stage of the parasite and the feeding stage of the parasite is known as trophozoite 
This trophozoite here is present in the RBC of human beings and it completes a cycle and that to the cycle that takes place in the human beings is known as asexual cycle. So simply we can say that here the, in the life cycle of a parasite, if a parasite it completes its asexual life cycle in which host and that host will become as its secondary host. Then what about the primary host or which host will be considered as the primary host? It's an important one. As I said here, this is a mosquito, that is a female anophilus mosquito, in which, which acts as a primary host. The reason for that is, particularly the sexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction part of the parasite is carried out within this mosquito. So, the mosquito in which the sexual reproduction is carrying out, so this mosquito is considered as the primary host. So, in the entire life cycle of a parasite in which the asexual type of reproduction takes place and the feeding stages are present, then that is considered as there the secondary host. The sexual reproduction that takes place in which host, that is considered as its primary host. I hope you got the clarity regarding primary and secondary host. The same thing is given here even in the sentence form. You once you will go through it. See this? The human being is considered as the secondary host. The reason for that is that the feeding stage, which is known as a prophozoid, technically, it takes place in the RBC of the human beings. That is the reason why this is the human being considered as the secondary host. Whereas the primary host, the mosquito, is known as the primary host. It is the primary host. The reason for that is the sexual reproduction phase of the parasite is taking place in the gut. Gut in the sense, the elementary canal of the digestive system is known as a gut. In the gut of the mosquito it takes place. That is the reason why the female anophilus mosquito is considered as the primary host. Let us see some more information regarding this one. Then coming to the life cycle. The life cycle of this parasite, it completes in a two different here phases. One is known as asexual reproduction, whereas the second stage is known as the sexual reproduction. And these two types of here, the reproductive phases, takes place in a two different hosts. And if you see, the first one it takes place in the human beings. That is an asexual reproduction. That is the reason why I said the human beings are they are considered as the secondary hosts. Technically, the asexual reproduction that takes place in the human beings is known as Shaijogani, is an important part. And whereas the second phase of the life cycle of this uh, parasite, it takes place in a female anophilus mosquito. And that we call it as the sexual reproduction, it takes place in mosquito. Since it is a sexual reproduction, so that we consider it as the primary host. When you see that each here phase have got even the substages also. Let us see about them. Coming to here, this asexual reproduction takes place in a human beings, which is technically known as a Shaijogani, has got the three different here steps or stages. First one it includes, it is known as a hepatic Shaijogani. Hepatocytes might be heard about. The liver cells are known as hepatocytes. Since the cyclic processes takes place within the liver, particularly the hepatocytes, this is known as hepatic shaijogani and that too it takes place in liver, is one part in a shaijogani takes place in the human beings. Whereas the second one is known as a, here erythrocytic shaijogani, erythrocytic shaijogani. This erythrocytic shaijogani particularly related to the red blood cells, erythrocytes and we exclusively carry out within the red blood cells or erythrocytes so that we call it as here erythrocytic shaijogani whereas the third part includes gametogony and here the gametes or gamete mother cells are then produced during this process even if it takes place in the human beings itself 
and that is the third stage. These three stages includes here in the Shaijogani part. When you see this hepatic Shaijogani, even it has got the two important subphases in this in this regard. And see this one, it includes one is the pre-erythrocytic cycle. The hepatic Shaijogani is divided into two substages. One is known as pre means before the erythrocytic cycle. So this is a one which actually takes place before the commencement of this erythrocytic shaijogani. That is the reason why we call it as pre-erythrocytic cycle. But in the second part of this hepatic shaijogani, it includes exoerythrocytic cycle. You know, endo and exo, exo means outside. So next to this pre-erythrocytic cycle, outside the red blood cells, again in the liver cells, this cyclic reaction takes place. So it is known as exo-erythrocytic cycle. All these are the different stages that takes place in the human beings particularly. Right, coming to the here sexual reproduction, it includes again two important steps. And this sexual reproduction takes place exclusively in a female anopheles mosquito. And it includes two important things. One, it includes here a sexual cycle, it takes place. And as I said, at the end of here, this is a shai gamete mother cells will be get produced and here they do require a low temperature since the human body temperature is high they cannot continue thereafter so that they do get shift over to a another host where the low temperature is maintained that is nothing but here the mosquito so these gamete mother cells are get entered into the female here anopheles mosquito body particularly its digestive system so that it produces the gametes and these gametes involves in the fission so it is related to the sexual cycle the sexual cycle within the mosquito is followed by this sporogony this sporogony is actually the asexual here cycle in which actually infective stage of the parasite is get produced that i said already sporo joint as a result of this sporogony sporo joints are get produced about all these here stages i will explain in a detailed way so, coming to the next part. So, this is actually the diagram that represents the life cycle of the entire parasite. And this diagram is given in your NCRT textbook and different board examinations, different types of diagrams are represented. But here I am going with the diagram from the NCRT textbook. As I said here, it has got the two important uh, phases. One here, it takes place within the human beings that you can see. It takes place in human beings so this we can consider as here asexual here mode of reproduction once the parasite it bites or once the here mosquito it bites a healthy person it releases the infective stage of this parasite into our bloodstream along with its saliva that infective stage is known as a sporozoite here it enters and this sporo joint it remains in our blood for about half an hour. Thereafter, it reaches to our liver and it starts its uh, hepatic shaijogani. So the infective stage one here, see this in the diagram, you can clearly observe the mosquito when it bites, then it releases the sporo joints. These sporo joints are uh, get entered into the liver and it initiates or triggers the hepatic shaijogani that followed by here erythrocytic cycle thereafter gameto here gani all these things it takes place and next here in the same way it produces the gamete mother cells like male and here female when the infected person is here bitten by the any female anopheles mosquito and sucks his blood along with your blood these are here the stages of the parasite it enter into the bloodstream then, sorry, the mosquito body, again here see this, they will get entered into this mosquito body and again it starts the sexual phase within the mosquito which includes the female gamete as well as here it is the male gamete. And it here finally leads to the another stage which is known as the sporogony. So I am briefing you the entire life cycle now, I do give you a detailed information regarding this one. So this is here. Uh, the total diagram representing the entire life cycle of this parasite. Detail, I will explain about each stage in a detailed way. Right, coming to the next one, here in human beings, as I said, the plasmodium 
stage it enter into the human blood stream in the form of a particular stage which is known as the infective stage and the infective stage name is the sporo joint i said already this point which is an important part the sporo joint when here almost all when it bites near about 2000 number of sporo joints are get enter into the human blood stream and as i said here already it remains in its uh, your body in our blood stream for about half an hour this sporo joints there after they will enter into our liver is one thing now here actually the life cycle it starts that is a uh, hepatic schizogeny and all the things so before i explain all the stages of this life cycle in a detailed way i like to give you the detail here structure of this sporo joint which is known as the ultra structure of the sporo joint right let us see now here the diagram in detail now our part is here ultra structure of this sporo joint and it is a very microscopic structure so at which here the parasite it enter into our body when you see this uh, uh, parasite here the stage it is in the shape of sickle cell a sickle cell shape it is sickle you know it is a kind of knife that we used to here cut the grass and cut the trees and all so a sickle shaped here structure it is and the entire structure when you see at its middle part it is a swelling whereas here the both ends of the parasite is a tapering and coming to here the body is get covered by a here a flexible membrane which is known as a pellicle pellicle is a flexible here membrane which covers the entire body of this and internally it is get covered by here the cytoplasm cytoplasm is present within the body is one an interesting point when you see the pellicle all along with its length has got a micro tubules micro tubules are present throughout the length of this parasite these are called micro tubules then what is the function of these micro tubules these micro tubules helps for wriggling movement of this parasite wriggling movement in the sense when you are here screw in the in the wood generally how the screw it rotates or how it moves into the wood and such a kind of twisted movement is known as a wriggling movement for the wriggling movement of this sporo joint the responsible structure here are micro tubules it helps for this sporo joint to penetrate into the hepatocytes or liver cells that is an important part of from this side right at its center there you can see a nucleus is present so a single nucleus is present within this which is covered by a nuclear membrane you can see this nucleus and when you see its length the length of this one is almost all here 15 microns it's a length there is a width of this here the sporo joint is here 1 micron is a width of this one there is the length is almost all 15 microns in its length when you see at its extreme anterior end there you can see a depression a cup like depression is present this is a cup like depression this cup like depression is known as here apical cup apical cup it is into which actually two important here secretory granules two important here secretory organelles are get opens these two are known as secretory organelles they are all present then what is the function of the secretory organelles these secretory organelles secretes 
here cytolytic enzymes cytolytic enzymes or reach from this two secretory granules no, sorry organelles how many are there two in their number and this is released into this apical cup this cytolytic cyto represents cell lytic means breaks down these enzymes act on the here plasma membrane of liver cell or hepatocytes and breaks them down so that it is easy to this parasite to enter into the liver cells or hepatocytes further the secretory organelles here releases the cytolytic enzyme that helps to them and next to that along with that it has got some more important even the organelles also within this parasite you can see the golgi complex or golgi body is also present this is we call as golgi body body or complex so more detailedly in the first pu you do study about this important here cell organelle in a cell biology and along with that you can see within this there is another important cell organelle also which we call it as mitochondria you know very well about this one which is known as the power house of the cell and during which actually in which actually the respiration is carried out resulting of which the energy is produced the energy is taken up by this here the parasite and we use for its dye activities it is known as mitochondria and along with that endoplasmic reticulum here endoplasmic reticulum is also present this is what we call is er the abbreviated form endoplasmic reticulum is also present and one more interesting thing within this actually you can find out some more here tubules also present these are known as convoluted tubules some more tubules are there these are known as convoluted tubules whereas the functions of these convoluted tubules are unknown we don't know exactly what is the function of this convoluted tube so this is a totally the ultra structure of the sporozoite which is an infective stage of this here the parasite so i will give you the same detailed information here in this in this regard detail so it's an ultra structure of the sporozoite you can see was studied by a scientist and name of the scientist who studied this ultra structure is ganha is the name of the scientist and here this is a person who explained this one it is a sickle shell shape a sickle shape here the cell one next here it is measured about 15 microns in its length and 1 micron in its width 1 micron in its width and next one the body is covered with a elastic pellicle with microtubules microtubules i said already here regarding microtubules the major function of this microtubule it includes the wriggling movement of the parasite with the hepatocytes so it particularly involves in wriggling movement is another important thing right there after here it has got certain kind of organelles in its cell cytoplasm these organelles it includes as i said one is a golgi complex second one is the nucleus third one is even the mitochondria and fourth one it includes the endoplasmic reticulum this part endoplasmic reticulum all these are the various types of organelles present in the cytoplasm of this sporozoite they are all performing their respective functions and coming to the next one in this ultra structure you can see it consists of cytoplasm consists of here convoluted tubules just now i said this blue colored here structures convoluted tubules are present all along with its here length and but thing is the convoluted uh, tubules functions are not known to us they are here not known to anyone unknown to us this one so it consists of the epical cup here at its anterior end the epical cup is present into which actually here a cup like depression this is and into which here uh, the two secretory organelles they do get open and the releases the cytolytic enzymes see this consists of pair of secretory organelles also 
these are called the secretory organelles and these secretory organelles releases here very important point cytolytic enzymes see this they do releases the cytolytic enzymes these cytolytic enzymes helps for penetrating into a actually liver cells for penetration of these are here the sporozoites into the liver cells the cytolytic enzyme that helps to them this is all about the ultra structure of this uh, uh, sporozoite and the different kind of parts and their functions within the sporozoite so in the upcoming lesson i do explain in a detailed way the different stages that includes in the life cycle of the parasite till that time enjoy this lesson hope you all enjoyed it thank you all